Humphrey for the workout on Saturday, April 4th. Uh, what we're working on today is uh, we got all kinds of stuff going on today. We've got some shoulder work today. Uh, we've got a little bit of pulling, some abs, and then a really cool little uh, multi-part multi AMRAP at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and start walking you through all the movements. we got a lot of stuff to cover today. So, uh, you know, save this video and come back to it if you got questions. But starting with a simple piece of a warm up here, we're going to do three rounds of five inchworms. Then we're going to do 15 calf raises, which is exactly what it sounds like and then five Cossack squats on each leg. This is all just meant to get your legs ready um, and stretched out for the day. So the thing we're starting with, the inchworm, <clears throat> normally we do these with a push-up involved. You don't have to add a push-up uh, today. We've done a lot of pressing this week. So the inchworm is just simply reaching down, trying to get a good stretch, walking your hands out to a push-up position, and then bringing your feet to your hands. Now what I like to do on the inchworm is to then, especially if I'm trying to save space, I'm gonna walk my feet back, and then walk my hands back. So it's sort of an inchworm in place, which is one of these moves that, if we were at the gym, I would be having you go across the floor with these little tippy toe steps. But since I can't go any further because of my couch, I'm just gonna reverse it. So there's your inchworm. Then we've got some potential jump roping later on today. So I just want to make sure we're ready for that. We're just going to just raise your body up. Little pause at the top for 15 calf raises. Right, and then we're going to do our Cossack squat. So this is a really tough movement. A full on Cossack squat would involve you going all the way down to one side and then staying low and shifting to the other side. That's not easy for most people. So what I want this to be for most people is just reaching down and then drive the knee this way a little bit as far as you can. Go this way as far as you can. Just trying to kind of shift your weight. And then if you can, you can get a little further down using your arms for help. Maybe work on twisting this back leg up or leave it flat, whichever one feels better. We're just trying to kind of shift back and forth and play a little bit there to open up the hips and the legs. Then we're gonna go into another plank series, sort of like the rolling plank that we did on Tuesday. So this one, you may or may not want an ab mat for, but we're gonna do 20 seconds on one side, body stacked up, 20 seconds on the other side, and then we're gonna go into what's called a reverse plank which is really tough. So side, side, the reverse plank, I'm gonna do my hands this way, ideally. Might have to go this way because of flexibility reasons. And now from here, I'm just gonna try to press my hips up into this position. It's a lot harder than it seems like it would be. So don't be surprised if your hips are a little saggier than that, that's okay. We're just looking to press up Use all those back muscles. Oh, it's a good stretch in the shoulders and the biceps. Keep your butt squeezed and your hips high. So we're gonna do that for three rounds. Side, side, reverse plank. Now, let's talk about part one. We've got a little bit of PT work in here. These are called YTLs. This is a great exercise if you've ever played around with the crossover symmetry bands. A lot of these exercises you'll find with resistance bands. Um, these also come a lot in uh, physical therapy. So if you've ever had a shoulder issue or a dysfunction with your shoulder, this is probably what you would be given. The reason it's called a YTL is that is the shape you're gonna make with your <clears throat> arms. So we're gonna go first with a Y coming up this direction. Note that my thumbs are pointed backwards, not this way. Turning those arms out, Y. Then a T, we'll be making a T. The L, you're actually gonna make an L with your arm. So you're gonna go elbows up high, and then the movement is going to be, boom, make an L and come back down, make an L. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna hinge over so that we have just a touch of gravity. And by a touch of gravity, I really mean that this is a very much, uh, probably no weights involved, but if you wanna add it up a little bit, we're gonna use a very small amount of weight, like my, my friend Crush Pineapple here. So when you hinge over, what you're gonna do there are uh, sets here. So one set is going to be, let's say five reps or so of flat back. I'm gonna go Y for 
for five reps. See, even that it really is enough for me. Four, five, I'm gonna stay here. Now I'm gonna switch to T, trying to pinch my shoulder blades together. Big open chest. You can see I'm having a little pause at the top. That's five. And now from here, I'm gonna go here and pick my arms up and down, up and down, up, trying to keep my shoulders away from my ears, up, and that is the end of one set. So honestly, that was really tough. That's, that's as tough as it needs to be. Again, if you want to add a little bit of weight, maybe grab something super light in your hands for these, but I promise you probably won't need it. So those are your YTLs. We're gonna start off with those just to get the shoulders feeling good. Then we've got uh, sets of 10 of pulling of your choice. This is a little tricky because again, we're just kind of running low on options because we're all at home. So any kind of pull that works for you, we're gonna do 10 reps. And then we're gonna to add to that 10 reps of a leg lift over a target. So for that, I'm gonna bust out my parallel here because it doesn't matter. It could be crushed pineapple again, but all we're gonna to try to do is keep your legs together, keep them long, use your hands on the ground, and we're just gonna go over one, two, three, four, five, until we get to 10. So we're gonna do a few sets of that. That's your part one for the day. YTLs, pulling of choice, adding in some leg lifts. All right, so talking about part two, we've just finished up our three sets of 10 pulls and 10 leg lifts over a target. And now we're gonna get into part two, which is five rounds of a three minute AMRAP and a one minute rest. So three on, one off, three on, one off, three on, one off for five rounds. So what does that mean? Three on means short. And if it's short, that means fast. So we're gonna to try to really rack up a lot of reps Speed, speed, speed for three minutes, and then take one minute to rest. Let's talk about the two movements involved here in the AMRAP. We've got one, which is kettlebell swings, which is really interesting, because I don't have a kettlebell here, and many of you don't either, so we'll talk about that. The other is 40 double unders. I can tell you right now, I'm gonna try to do this workout outside, so I can do some jumping of the rope, but uh, if you don't, we're gonna go with our standard jumping jack substitution here, 40 jumping jacks for 40 double unders. If you have a rope, but you don't have double unders, let's just go with single unders. Let's just keep it at 40. So it's nice and simple. And again, the more rounds you get, the more reps you get in that short window, the better. We're looking for a sprint pace, okay? Now, the kettlebell swings. So here's something I discovered earlier today. You can use a dumbbell for a kettlebell swing. Really all we're looking for with a kettlebell swing is to make sure that just like the deadlifts we've been doing, your hips go backwards this way. Your back stays flat. This is about as far as you need to go over. And your hands end up reaching through your legs. So if you have a kettlebell handle, you'd be grabbing here. And then I'm gonna squeeze my butt as hard as I can to launch the kettlebell up. These kettlebell swings can be here, they can be up, whatever is more comfortable for you, depending on your ceiling. But really the whole deal here is that you're gonna to try to connect the dots between arms coming down, hips, Cradle, hips launch the arms. So as that weight comes back down, catch it with your hips, send them back. Again, this is as far as I need to go. We don't need to go super far down. And then you use your hips to launch that weight up into the air. So really using that motion, you can kind of do this in a bunch of different ways. The way I discovered earlier that I could do kettlebell swings with the dumbbell because I just doubled up my hands this way. I traded each round which hand was on top just for comfort. But I can actually get the same thing going. Let's see if I'm going to break our ceiling like so. Up, up. You can see I'm using my hips to push or you can do it with Russian swings which again you'll get through those reps even faster, right? So that's one way you can do it if you don't have a kettlebell. If you have a kettlebell, obviously we're just gonna do swings, your choice on the style. Another way you can do this, if you don't have a weight involved, what looks funny, I don't care, it works. Here's what we're gonna do. Get on that band. 
This is a great exercise that nobody ever wants to do in the gym. Let's take advantage of this at-home training. You can do awkward stuff like this. From here, I'm just going to do the same thing that I would with the kettlebell. I'll reach back, squeeze, reach back, squeeze, reach back, squeeze, squeeze. Now, because I have the band here and it's not super tough, I'm adding a little longer squeeze at the front to try to mimic that same timing as the swing, okay? You could also, let's see, if you have a dumbbell, one of the options, this is something that I haven't done in a while, so I, I plan to do this because I think it's really fun, is a hang clean and jerk. So from here, I'm gonna do the same kettlebell swing through the legs, but with one arm only. Get it up to my arm here, shoulder, and then you can use a jerk or a press or whatever you want. We're going swing through, up, swing through, up, or up, come right back down. Hoi. That's more like a kettlebell swing. As long as you're catching it with the hips. You could also, because I'm using the same motion with my hips, you could also turn that into a, a hang snatch. So I'm going up in one straight motion or any version of those kind of things. We're just looking for a violent squeeze of the butt, extending of the hips. If you got no weight at all, I would say a really nasty thing you could do would be jump lunges. So I'm gonna switch, 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 switch. Those will wear you out real fast. So three minutes to do weighted reps all the way to 20, grab your jump rope, to 40, 20, 40, 20, 40, 20, 40, rest. We do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. I think that's all I got for you today. Um, reminded that we're holding uh, a noon class only today on Saturday. It's uh, not the 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., just one class at noon. Hope to see you there. Have fun.